guys, it's John here for another episode of the division previews, and today we'll be looking at the Atlantic Division, which is arguably the most competitive and uh, best division in the NHL. And um, once again, we'll start with who I think is going to come in last in the division and work our way up to who's going to come in first. So we're going to start out with the New York Islanders. And um, in goal, they have Rick DiPietro and Evgeny Nabokov. Which are two, I mean, Nabokov is getting kind of old. DPSO used to, I mean, the Islanders signed him to that huge contract years ago. But he's just had so many injury problems lately. He's been unsure. Uh, so their their goalies are, I mean, their goal, their goaltending isn't great. Over to defense, you have their captain, Mark Streit, who is very solid. And they also have Lumir Viznoski, but there's that problem right now where he's refusing to, he wants to stay in the KHL, so he's refusing to come over to the NHL. So now they've suspended him. Then they also have youngsters in Travis Hamannick, and uh, they also have uh, Calvin DeHaan, but uh, he's still in the AHL, but he'll eventually come back up. And they also signed Matt Carpenter in the offseason, which will give him some more strength at the back. And forwards, they have a young, they have a, actually a pretty good uh, young uh, forward core, led led by uh, John Tavares, who is already one of the best players in the league, but since he's on the Islanders, he doesn't get noticed as much. But eventually, he's going to be a, one of the top players in the league. You also have uh, Kyle Ocposo, Matt Molson, Michael Grabner, Josh Bailey, they have they have a good core in New York, and eventually, I, I think moving to Brooklyn and getting a new stadium and stuff will help them. But uh, eventually, I think they'll have a successful franchise, but just not this year. Next, we'll have the uh, Stan, uh, the Stanley Cup finalists, the New Jersey Devils, and um, there's a couple reasons why I think the Devils are going to struggle a little bit this year. First of all, obviously, they lost their captain and leader, Zach Parisa, in the offseason, which is a huge loss for them. Um, and also just, I mean, the lockout is going to definitely benefit Broder and Hedberg because it gives them some extra time to um, rest. But um, they're still both aging, and uh, I, I mean, I, th I think they're not going to have, I think they're going to struggle a little bit. And... Um, they still have Kovalchuk, who I think is going to have a great year, and David Clarkson, and Patrick Eliash is getting getting a little bit up there, but Adam Henrique is back for another year, Ryan Carter, uh, Steve Bernier, Dinah Zubris, Travis Zajac, they signed to a long-term contract. So the Devils are still in pretty good shape up front, but at defense, other than Adam Larson, they're, they're kind of struggling a little bit, and goaltending in like a couple of years, they're going to they're going to need to, maybe even next year, because Berdur, this might be Rose last year. But, uh, yeah, so that's the Devils. Now we'll move over to the Philadelphia Flyers. And they uh, they just named uh, Claude Giroux their captain, which I think was kind of an obvious choice after what Chris Pronger has been going through lately. And Ilya Brzgalov is back for another year. They lost Sergei Bavrovsky. They traded him to the Blue Jackets. But I think Brzgalov is going to have a bounce back year this year because he's really not a bad goalie. He just, I mean, he just, he couldn't get settled in in Philadelphia that first year. And then with that, um, with the uh, Winter Classic, that the, that twenty four seven show, he, I mean, he was making all those like comments and stuff, and he became the center of attention. I don't think he really wanted that. And they also acquired Luke Shen in the off season as they traded away James Reinsdorf. I think this helped both teams because the Maple Leafs needed a big power forward up front and the Flyers needed more defense, especially with the loss of Pronger. And they also lost Matt Carl, arguably their two best defenders, along with Kimo Timonen. But they still have Timonen, Luke Shen, Mizaros, Grossman, Coburn, and they signed Curtis Foster in the, as well. So their defense is really fine. I think Brzezgalov will rebound and have a solid season. And their forwards, they have a pretty solid uh, f forward core. And they have Denny Briere, who is out right now. I don't know if he is just, like, sick, if he has, like, a flu, or if he's still injured, but uh, he's not playing yet. Sean Couturier is here for another year, coming up his rookie season. You, they signed Ruslan Fedoteko in the offseason. He has 
bunch of playoff experience. He's won two cups with the Lightning and the Penguins, I believe. Obviously, they have Claude Giroux, Scott Hartnell. They have Scott Lawton, who's a young rookie, who <coughs> who I think is going to have a good year. Matt Reed is back. He led the he led all rookies in goals, I think, last year. Braden Shen is back. Wayne Simmons, Maxime Talbot, Jakub Voracek. So I mean, the Flyers have a pretty solid team. I have them in third, and and but since the Atlantic Division is so strong, like I said earlier, I think the Flyers will make the playoffs. Maybe like a seven seed. Maybe match up against the Penguins or something like that in the first round. That'd be a great game again, because I have the Penguins winning this division. But um, yeah, so now we we'll look at the Rangers, who are a Stanley Cup candidate. And um, we'll start in goal. Obviously, you got uh, Henrik Lundqvist, arguably the best goalie in the league. So you're, and then you have a strong backup goalie in Marty Baron too. So you're, the the Rangers are set in net, and also they have one of the best def def defenses in the league. And um, John Tortorella, I think, likes to like pride his team on blocking shots because his team blocks shots all the time. So look at their D. They have Michael Delzato, who they signed uh, just before training camp started. They brought back Matt Gilroy. He was with the Rangers, and then he went to Ottawa for a little bit, and then to Tampa for a little bit. I think they just signed him again. Dan Girardi, Ryan McDonough, Mark Stahl, Anton Strahlman, Michael Sauer they brought back. I think Michael Sauer's hurt right now. But yeah, so their defense is very, very solid. And then up front, they acquired Rick Nash in the offseason, the whole Rick Nash saga. But they traded away Dubinsky, Anisimov, Tim Erickson, who was like a prospect, and some picks, I believe. And they still have Brad Richards, Marion Gabrick, Ryan Callahan, Derek Stefan's back. Chris Kreider is going to be here for his first full season. They signed Jeff Halpern, who has history with John Tortorella, I believe, in Tampa. And uh, I think that's that's a great signing for him because it just gives him an extra penalty killer and an extra third or fourth line center. So I believe the Rangers are going to have a very solid season. I'm thinking maybe like the four, the fourth seed in the East. And of course now the only one left is the Pittsburgh Penguins. I believe the Pittsburgh Penguins are going to have an amazing season this year. Uh, I, they signed Thomas Vokun as a backup to Marc-Andre Fleury, so their goaltending is going to be set. People look back on Fleury's season last year and think that he really didn't have a good season, but he really had one. He was very solid the whole regular season. He just got unlucky. He he got cold at the wrong time, which is the playoffs. But so their goaltending is set in Fleury and Vokun. Their defense, they of course have Chris Letang, Brooks Orpik, Matt Niskanen, Paul Martin, Derek Engeland, and uh, Simon Dispre or Dip Dip Dispre, I think his name is. So their defense is very. Very solid, led by Latang and Orpik and uh, Martin. And then, of course, up front, who can forget? Sidney Crosby. Well, this lockout, I think, really helped Crosby because it just gave him extra time to just fully recover and get uh, geared up and ready to go for the season. And, of course, you have uh, Evgeny Malkin, who was the Hart Trophy winner last year, and James Neal, who had his a career year last year. So those three are going to lead lead the team up front. And they also acquired Brandon Sutter in the trade where they traded away Jordan Stahl. But Brandon Sutter, I think, will bring like a whole new dimension to the Penguins because he'll be the third-line center, and he is just like great like all-around two-way defender. He kind of, I mean, two-way forward center. He kind of reminds me of a young Patrice Bergeron in a way because he can, he can really play on anywhere. He can be in your penalty kill, your power play. He can, he can do any, anything, really. And then you still have the the uh, other core guys like Chris Kunitz, Tyler Kennedy. They signed Tanner Glass, which I thought was a good move. Uh, Pascal Dupuis, Matt Cook, Craig Adams. All in all, I just think the Penguins are going to have a fantastic year this year. So that's why I have them up up in first in the Atlantic, and I think first in the uh, East. So that is the my Atlantic Division preview, guys. I hope you like it. Liked it. If you thought this like helps you understand anything at all or you just like the video please like it down below i'd really appreciate it and uh thanks for watching guys and i'll talk to you guys next time